In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, in today's Gospel, we are seeing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ about six months before his Passion. He went to the temple and he prayed. And after, he is coming outside. And they are seeing this blind man from birth. Not that he lost his sight afterwards, but he was blind, born. He was born blind. Which means that their eyes were completely absent. And in the, in the Judaic tradition and teaching was that if something like this happens, the, the parents had sinned. And the children are paying the price for their parents' sins. Because we see the apostles are asking Jesus, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus is saying, neither him or his parents, but this happened that God may be glorified in him. So where this comes from, when God ordered through Moses that whoever is going to worship the idols or any other creature is going to be punished him and his offsprings to the third and fourth generation. Okay? So this is why the Jewish had this that the children will pay for their parents sin. But God did not say this. He said specifically if you will worship the idols. Not for everything else. Specifically. But they took it for everything and they they were looking at those that had Illnesses, lame, blind, paralyzed, and were looking at us as sinners and dividing the people. <clears throat> so, and Jesus made it clear that neither him or his parents. Now he approaches him and his spot, and he is making clay in front of his disciples showing them that the logos the word of god that everything was created through from the beginning of times now is among them they are witnessing the logos creating again fixing that guy's eyes. Out of clay, the same material that he used for Adam and Eve. He is using exactly the same material and he is creating a <laughs> pair of eyes to this poor man that was born blind. And he sends him to the pool of Siloam to wash. <clears throat> Again, we are dealing with water. So last Sunday, we had Jesus meeting the Samaritan woman, St. Fortini, at the pool of Jacob, and now at the well of Jacob. And now he is sending this man 
to the pool of Siloa to wash his eyes and he comes back seeing. And after this joyful event, we're facing a tragedy. A tragedy, why? Because the people that saw him, they were arguing, first of all, among them, isn't this that guy that used to beg, the blind one? Some of them would say, yes, that's him. Others would say, no, this is like him. It's not him. But he said to them, I am the man. Then what happened to you? And he is telling them the story of his miraculous curing. But they don't, they don't believe him. And they are taking him to the Pharisees, to the temple. They are charging him to tell them what happened. And he is telling them again the story that he met his pot and made, made clay. So, and that, that was another problem. According to the Mosaic law, it wasn't allowed on Sabbath to make clay. Even if he would use another way to cure that, Either way, they will find a way to blame him that he is not keeping the Sabbath, as they did. This, he is a sinful man because he does not keep the Sabbath. So, but again, even though the blind man is telling them now the second time, they do not they did not believe him and they invited his parents and his parents are saying yes this is our son yes. so when you're saying that he was born blind yes okay so then now how he, he can see and and you see here the parents <clears throat> of course they knew the answer and they knew who was their son's benefactor but they are avoiding out of the fear, out of convenience, to tell in front of the Sanhedrin of the council of the hierarchs who was their son's benefactor. He says, we don't know. We know that he was born blind. We know that he is our son, but how he can see now, we do not know. And the evangelist is mentioning this. They did that because of the fear of the Jews. Because they already know, announced whoever will declare him being a prophet or messiah or whatever else will be cast out from the synagogue. So they already persecuted not only Christ but those who will follow him. And they are inviting again the man. Because the parents said he is of age. Let him answer for himself. And they are telling this man. We know that he is a sinner. Tell us again. How did he cure you? He said. Is he a sinner or not? I don't know about that. I'm not sure. But I know one thing. That he cured me. I was blind from birth. And he made clay. And he sent me and put on my eyes and he sent me to wash and I came back seeing. This is what I know. And I know another thing. That God does not listen to the sinners but to those that are doing his will. To those pure in heart. To those that believe in him. And they are char charging him, tell us then, what do you believe about him? He said, he is a prophet. He is a Messiah. And he is starting confessing the truth. And they are saying, you, who was 
born in sin, you are teaching us. And they ca had cast him out. So doesn't this happen in our days? Whoever doesn't agree with the rulers of this world, other there are the pol politicians, other they are uh, religious leaders, if we do not agree with them, they are showing you the door. It's the, exactly the same thing. Nothing had changed over the years. 2,000 years, we are still facing the same thing. We are infected with the same virus. It's the virus of ego. First of all, as he had pointed that it wasn't, it nev we never heard for such a thing. A man born blind to be cured, to receive his sight. This is some, so, something that never happened. So, and how, how can you doubt? But the ego did not allow them to see this. You see, the, the man that was born blind, even though he was born blind, but he has his spiritual sight, his spiritual vision, that he could see who was before him. But those who had the law in their hands, even though they were physically, they had their eyes and they, they could see, but they could not see spiritually. How many of us today, my dear ones, are blind? spiritually seeing we are not seeing and hearing we are not hearing we're not listening to the words of God and we, we, we cannot divide what is good and, and what is bad what is beneficial and what is evil for us because we, we lost our spiritual side But you see the blind man, even though he was uneducated, he is trying to help the Pharisees. But their ego is not letting them. You're going to teach us who are you? You who were born in sins. Get away. Go out of here. So this is what is happening. Even though we are seeing the truth, and some, someone, God is speaking to, to us through his creation, we do not want to listen. We do not want to hear the voice of God. We want to live the way we want to, and to interpret his words the way we want to. And to worship him, not as he told the Samaritan woman last Sunday, in truth but we want to do our own way the way we want the way we like so unfortunately we are becoming idolaters because we're not worshiping the true God but a God created by our own understanding and interpretation And we are becoming blind, blind and living in the misery and darkness of our own ego. We have to get up, get over this, and fight to see the light. So, you know, this is like sometimes we are seeing those dark clouds and that they are covering the sun and it becomes kind of dark during the day right and when it they goes away the sun shines again and again you can see the light and and it's beautiful again so something similar 
happens in our lives, in our spiritual life. The devil brings the cloud of sin. While we are sinning, we are letting those clouds to shadow the light of Christ, to shadow our heart, and we cannot see the light of Christ anymore. And we're living in that misery and darkness of the sin. So, and he is giving us the opportunity to wash at the pool of Siloam, which is his church, through the confession, under the epitrahelion of the priest, to take that bath, to wash the sins, and to be reborn, to receive again our sight, our vision, to receive the discernment again, to be able to divide the good from, from the bad and to choose what is good and pleasant to God. So let us take this teaching from this gospel, my dear ones. As did this man, because after they had cast him, him out, Jesus found him, him, and he's asking him, do you believe in the Son of Man? And he's saying, who is this that I can believe in him? He's discovering his identity. It's one of the few times that he's discovering his identity. Usually, he's speaking in parables, but now he has Last Sunday, he said to the Samaritan woman that it is he that is speaking to you. He's, he's the one that is in front of you and speaking to you. The same thing this man, this blind man is hearing today. And he felt before him and worshipped him. So let us fell down and worship him. Let us ask him to become the light of our lives. Let us ask him to give us our spiritual sight that we shall see, that we can see and we can see the truth and divide and become his true flock. Because as we saw, the people was divided from the beginning. Some said that this is him. Others said, no, it's like him. The Pharisees, they were divided too. Others would say, well, Let's first see what he does and after condemn him. Others know he's a sinner. So, and so is the, the people is divided in our days. And it's pretty clear. But let us come back to our senses. Let us seek the divine light. Let us embrace the light. Let us embrace the truth because he said, I am the light. I am the truth. So only with the light Christ, we can move forward and we can see to the end of the tunnel. Because this temporary life, it's like a dark tunnel that we are going through. But we have to keep the light that we received through baptism to keep it lead to the end of the tunnel that we will pass through that into life eternal. That's our goal. That's the reason we are here. So let us try, my dear ones, to make it, to make this happen. And to receive and keep us, once we receive the light, it's most, dif most difficult to keep it lit. So let us try to keep the light of Christ throughout our life. And thus, all together with one voice to say God is the Lord and he revealed himself to us. Amen. God bless you all. Christ is risen.